Welcome to the Daily Addictions channel. Today, I'm going to be talking about the Exorcist Believer. Well, my thoughts on this movie get a little bit into a rant, but I'm going to say part of my October viewing horror movies, I wanted to keep it going and I didn't get to do it the whole month, but this was something I was looking forward to. A movie based on the myth and law, the original Exorcist, uh, somewhat of a direct sequel in a, in a way. I was not happy with the end of this by the end of this movie. And, but first, let me go into a little bit of the original and my love of horror. When I was younger, I heard stories about the movie from my mother who saw it in the theaters. My mother was a big horror fan lover, had all horror books. I've talked about this in some of my podcasts, and when I first saw The Exorcist, the first one, I loved it as a kid, loved it as I grew older, became, uh, you know, a champion for its greatness in the sense of, I think it's a great movie, not just a great horror movie, and so much about it I can watch over and over every year, and it's got so much going for it, and leading from that, I just can't say enough good things about The Exorcist. It's just amazing. Now, the second one, The Heretic, I think, I remember liking as a kid. But growing up, it started confusing me. And then it just became a stopgap for something I would watch, but I don't tout it as a you know good, great movie. I, I, I see the premise they were going for, bringing Linda Blair back. I, I really appreciated that. Some of the dream stuff got a little out there, and I thought, okay, I can go with it, but... I'm not going to sit here and rave about the second Exorcist movie. But the third one is what really, really got me as an adult getting older. And it's basically a crime, like a serial killer movie that involves the myth and the lore of the Exorcist. And I love it. It got George C. Scott with some of the best dialogue, a great movie. And it really has to do with the priest from the first one, and he's playing the police officer from the first movie. And his friendship and connection with the priest that in the movie, that's the third Exorcist movie. Um, and they give it different names and stuff, but it's The Exorcist 3 with George C. Scott. And it is amazing. I love that movie. Now, there are some other ones in there, like two different versions of another movie, which is a prequel. To me, it's more of just something to fill in the law, but it doesn't have any highlights. Whereas The Heretic, I got kind of confused and look at it as a bad sequel in a sense, but it's something that I grew up with and it's part of the law that I've learned and watched, and besides reading a book. Um, the third movie really captivated me as a movie on its own that just dabbled in you know, The Exorcist, and it is amazing. I love that movie. I probably watch that movie more than I watch The Original Exorcist these days. And again, watch The Exorcist 3. It is fabulous. It's got such great actors, and George e. Scott is just the best in that fucking movie. Getting on to the fourth or whatever, these movies, they kind of, you forget them. Now, again, going into this, I'm trying to, you know, I'm actually excited, um, getting into the movie and right away it just it, i don't know how if it's bad to say but when you see, when you got things like sharknado and companies that do pretty decent b movie rip off type spin off um you know they're all there it's it's all over the place these days every time a major movie comes out there'll be an offshoot b version that type thing and this feels like it right from the beginning i don't feel i'm immersed in a real honorable continuation or sequel of the exorcist not from the beginning not to the end not with the cinematography the dialogue special effects practical like whatever they're doing it doesn't resonate for me at all and which is really kind of fucked up because they bring in the mother from the first movie and I'm, I'm I'm a little confused, like what's going on at first, because okay, you okay. Oh, so let me just say I didn't know much about the movie in that sense that I knew it connected exactly, you know, through what conduits and what cables connected everything. I just knew oh, it was a new um, 
that's just this movie, and I was going to watch it. So, again, um, they bring in the mother from the first one, and they kind of give her a... Okay, so for me, after the first movie, you can see um, the mother getting into the occult and learning about exorcisms and things like that. There's a couple of weird dialogue things in here. And I'm not really vibing with it, but I was kind of curious where they were going. So although it didn't appeal to me as a cinematic experience or a movie that is, you know, drawing me in from the sound to the cinematic, all the camera cuts and, you know, what's going on with the plot, I was I was at least interested in, holy shit, they're going to bring back the mother and keep her what? Um, you know... But again, I'm like I don't give spoilers and much plot stuff here. But they don't keep her around in that sense for long. But she does come in and do the, you know, cultures and exorcisms and giving some information for the movie. But it doesn't resonate with me because it just falls flat on bad dialogue and wrong casting, in my opinion. They went and got two kid actors who are great. You know, nothing wrong with kid actors and what they're doing. But you're tying it into The Exorcist with just, like, I don't know, it just doesn't feel legitimate. Especially when you have fathers and mothers and family members, and then you got to get all the different cultures or religions. And it doesn't feel like it, it. it's put together well or crafted in a sense that, you know, has any real meaning for me when, when, I, when I'm so excited about the movie and The Exorcist is dear to me in a sense. And when I look at the director of this movie, David Gordon Green, you look at his stuff and I, I, I'm not shocked when I read he did the Halloween, recent Halloween movies. So in 2018, Halloween came out and they sort of did the same thing. They made a direct sequel, cutting out some of the other movies that were in in my opinion, you should have just left it, um, not said anything, just kept it open-ended. And I liked, the, I liked it. 2018 Halloween, I kind of liked. But his 2021 Halloween Kills and Halloween Ends <clears throat> go off the fucking rails into stupid land, and I don't give a fuck. I, I ranted about that movie. But I'll give it that he had a vision, and he got me hooked in the beginning, and it's just not my type of story where he wanted to go. Um, showing Michael and certain things and the whole fucking evil dies tonight thing. Nothing resonated, resonated with me in those movies. But I'm not surprised that it's him. Because this feels like um, that it's going to be the same thing. You're shortcutting some of the other um, Exorcist movies to fit this in. And you're saying, okay, the mother from the first one is somehow an aficionado on this. You wrote a book, and you give the book to the families. You're trying to get the priest involved. Again, in the first movie, it is so palpable. The, the atmosphere, the tension, the struggle, the what the mother's going through, what the priests are trying to tell her, and what ultimately happens in that movie, and... Linda Blair, everything in that movie, this just tries to, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a, a, a product of love, like a, a piece together story, because the story's like kind of, I don't know, I, I don't get it. You've got a direct link, you got this, what was her name, Ellen Burstyn, back from whatever, and she's playing the mom, okay, so like I said, you got someone like me a little bit intrigued. But again, like a lot of these B-movies, sets are important, lighting's important, sounds are important. And all you give me is trying to make it that one of the girls looks a lot like Linda Blair did. You've got two girls, and you've got this uh, ultimatum decision to make at the end of the movie. on um, Which kid lives or dies. Again, all you did was like write a, a, a through-line plot and... With no weight, no real feelings involved. What makes the original Exorcist great, and even some of the continuations, is 
just the heart of it and where it's trying to go and i'm not even a religious person i don't believe in nothing like that but i'm intrigued and i'm captivated it's good good movie good writing amazing cinematography i felt this movie just was bland and had nothing for me that was gonna intrigue me and yes a little bit of this rant is the love of um the exorcist even the prequel to version things that tried to tell the story of the priest beforehand i don't know what you want to call that four or five uh you know in in how this goes uh this doesn't feel like it really mattered and i'm going to give a plot type reveal away because it's part of the rant is so you got the mother back the spoilers right um she tries to help out and advice and things that you should do and, you know what could ultimately be behind things you know the real, she's, she's that character in the movies like this that'll come in you know give, give the bullshit but because the evil forces they blind her and they even mention her daughter or they write it somewhere at the end of this fucking movie <laughs> at the end of this fucking movie uh linda blair comes back into the hospital okay and i was so fucking pissed you wasted this fucking movie now i know maybe she didn't want to do a full-blown movie when the black and the mother whatever reasons why she came into it but you have a movie here about two little girls and their families and what they're going through and it's just now it's just nail polish it's just bullshit on a bullshit story with no f the foundation that is horrible and it, it's the original exorcist so how do you fuck that up you fuck it up by bringing the mother back trying to give it weight getting someone like me intrigued putting out a bland fucking movie with no substance no real weight to it no um struggle and i don't feel nothing from anybody in this movie except for the kids um and you fucking have Linda Blair. Because part of the movie is the mother is estranged from the daughter. Reagan, Regan, whatever, Reagan, from the movie. So they don't talk no more. And she doesn't know if she's alive, that type thing. Holy shit. Just fucking, that really pissed me off. You could have had a fucking excellent movie with little fucking cherries on top that would have made people fucking wowed. Because you had the short, you know, the, the movie in tight, time-wise. You know, I'm, I'm good for that with horror movies. You don't all have to be two and a half hour, two part it's and things like that, which I'm kind of a fan of, but or the original Exorcist. And Exorcist 3, God, I, I keep touting that movie. I fucking love that movie. What did you give me here? Because uh, here goes a plot, right? They show a prequel type whatever plot certain many years ago um you know paramedics and he's got to choose his daughter his wife there's 13 years later the guy doesn't have faith in god he's got his wife and then the two kids go into fucking the forest because one's trying to contact the mother spiritually they come back three days and that means something and then they just get burned and turn into exorcist linda blair uh, eventually pea soup vomiting possessed kids and they fucking then the movie is them chained in the fucking room and there's a circle of priests and religious people from different cultures trying everything they can on them there's some kind of story plot trying to go in there that's fucking horrible about who the fucking father what he what is love and is the other family and do you believe you know not a believer all the bullshit that could have been done fucking really good and could have been an eye-opener for society and, and, and culture from the first movie. You know, there were great behind-the-scenes stuff for the first movie. People fucking vomiting and fainting in the movie theater. You could have added some of this real stuff and put, made a real good fucking movie about a family who gets caught up in this thing and contact a mother who's been ridiculed and she writes a book and you can go real, really in-depth into... This was based off a true thing, because I guess it is, in a sense. We know it's bullshit, but you know how the exorcist came about. He saw an article, um, exorcist, successful, everything's good. You know, some bullshit. And 
you could have really fucking fit this movie in in an epic way. I say this sometimes, but I don't see people going out to make movies to, sh to suck and be bad. You get trying to get the best actors and whatever. But there is something to some of these companies like Blumhouse and whatever that will make certain movies for a certain amount of money and put some kind of talent in it. I mean, look, I like the Halloween movie. Uh, he, this guy did Pineapple Express, David Gordon Green, I think, which I fucking love. So it's not like I hate the director or anything. Just seems like bad choices. A script that was hollow and, you know, so fucking bland to me. I didn't, I feel nothing. There's no connection to me. When I watch the first movie, I'm so fucking tense and anxious with the mom and what she's going through, her reaching out. She's trying everything to fucking get the kid fucking looked in, Linda Blair looked into, like, what's going on. And it culminates into this dark fucking shit that I don't even believe in. But yet I'm there, just riveted to the fucking screen every time I watch that movie. Even the new cut, which he does the spider walk and stuff. Great things they added in. This is just another movie spun out of this machine, it feels like. This feels like what people talk about when they do reviews about, you know, about these companies like Blumhouse. Like, yeah, you can expect a pretty fun movie out of things, but that's like unique stuff or unique takes on things where I can kind of wrap my head around it and... I don't know, so maybe this is a little too close to home. The Exorcist is too beloved to me. Uh, like I said, I'm giving the second one a fucking hand wave because of its, you know, time of life that I watched it and growing up and being so captivated by the book and my mother's, you know, all the whole shit. And I'll debate that the first Exorcist movie is a great movie and on its own and this took those elements directly. I mean, the third one did it so fucking great, and it had really nothing to do, except it's the fucking police officer, and it's the Gemini killer with some great acting, and then they showed a priest from the fucking movie who threw himself out the window at the end of the original, and it connects with you when your heart breaks, and when fucking George C. Scott is doing his shit, and it's a serial killer movie. Horrible, gross, gory in a sense dark fucking movie that takes the fucking elements and doesn't shove it in your face. It doesn't try to make you know a mockery almost of the original. This feels almost spoof like. And I'm okay with that like scary movies and things like that. If maybe I'm just a little I am too close to this. But this plot is just fucking horrible. And the way it progresses and you're you're building up through this with side characters and little Tidbits of, you know, there's not not everybody in the movie sucked. And not every line of dialogue is horrible. But how much money are you putting into this to devote? Do, do you need three more months? I don't think so. I think someone just decided to just let's put this out. There's no, most, no other way to really kind of kind of get into that. Because, you know, I'm not in that business in that sense, but... I fancy myself, blah, blah, blah. I wrote a novel, published a novel. I write fucking scripts. Like, it, it, I don't have any authority in a sense, but I always try to give the benefit of the doubt. Like, people aren't looking out to make bad movies. But when you talk about sequels and stuff, is, is it just common sense to say, yeah, that it's a thing to put out to get money? I don't know how much you buy the fucking rights for these movies. You hear about it with the Predator movie and, like, that awful fucking movie they made and some valid attempts at the aliens versus predator i mean it happens but when someone like blumhouse gets it like i didn't care at the point i, I didn't really draw attention to it like i didn't know much about this movie except that one of the girls looks a lot like the original now looking back on it it's november the last month i watched it in my horror month in a good mood I can't recommend this movie as a good movie, as a good sequel, as, as part of the myth and lore. If it wasn't for that fucking scene with the Linda Blair coming back at the end, I almost could see... I could almost see me saying, look, there's going to be more movies on this. They're going to bring back something. They're going to... Like you could blow on the embers of this and create another fire. 
I mean, especially if you have a, even a cameo from Ellen Burstyn and um, Linda Blair in that sense. You don't have to make them the heroes and badass people. It's just part of the world. Again, I would have done it more with a slant. I would have showed that the first movie had impact on these lives. And that when she's called in, her book is brought up. You feel it. I don't feel any, you know, resonance with the first movie except that she spoke out about it and it created a divide between her and her daughter, Reagan, Linda Blair. And I get that. And that's totally feasible from the first movie. Right? We're accepting that the movie is real, real life. It's a movie, movie universe. So it happened. And what happens? Oh. We got to explain the death of two priests. One's old, okay, had a heart attack. The other one jumped out a fucking window. And if you don't even want to involve the George C. Scott movie with that, you just go right from there. What happens from there? They are bombarded with fucking news and media for years, and everywhere they go is something they get estranged because the mother decides to tell the whole story, right? Tell, tell a book and tells all. I get it, and it should have resonated, really should have hit me in the feels. It should have uh, anchored me to this movie. If you're going to fucking use her. No, she's used as a fucking prop, just like at the end when Linda Blair comes into the fucking hospital. What the fuck was the point of this? Another fucking spoiler in the decision twisty twist at the end, one of the little girls has to die, and they, they kill her. And then they show like a fucking aftermath thing. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? This movie should have been ended with a fucking half black screen with sickly colored eyes and a breathing. Like something that would have fucking showed me that this evil was real. It felt it wait. Because what is one of the kids dragged to fucking hell or something like that? Like, you know, this demon won, right? In that sense. No priest came out with a victory of self-sacrifice. Although, one fucking guy who, the, I guess he's the main priest, the Roman Catholic priest, he can't do shit, he tells them stuff, yeah, you can do this, but I, I'm not allowed. And he bursts in at the end, like he's going to be a cowboy, and do all the things, and then the fucking um, demon kids snap his fucking neck, and, you know, whatever, it just, I didn't feel, you know, I'm not, I don't believe in this stuff, so there's no terror in that for me. In the way it would be for like people who are believing like they're a ghost and they're like things like that. When it involves things like the occult stuff, it's got to be a good movie for me, or at least fun and, and exciting, like the Chucky movies. You know, fucking Chucky movie, the, the original. Let's go just really quick with the original. Uh, fucking killer goes running away from the police, gets wounded. He's mortally wounded. He lands in a fucking toy store and he knows some occult things that let you possess a doll. There you go. The two foot fucking tall Chucky doll is now possessed by a killer spirit. Fine. And by the way, in the Exorcist 3 with George C. Scott, the Gemini killer is that same actor, Brad Dura or something. Dura? I don't know what the fuck. Anyway. Uh, I don't know why I brought it up now that my mind is scattered, but I don't, I, I, don't, I don't see why you didn't use this opportunity to make everything enriched, uh, build on it. You just seem to want to ape off uh, kids looking demonic and uh, again the priest uh, you know coming in with the last save and it doesn't work you got the ending where it's a loss if you want to get technical like one family lost a fucking kid it's, it's just and then you want to end with the mother in the hospital blind because the fucking kids like stab her in the eyes with some scissors or some shit floating telekinetic poltergeist shit and she's in the hospital at the end of the movie, and Linda Blair comes and grabs her hand. Like this is this is supposed to be an epic part of the fucking movie. This is supposed to be epic. This is supposed to be holy shit. You see, oh, you tear up, you swell up, or, you know. And then what come? What could come next from this? Even if you never planned on doing another one, or if you don't plan on another one, it's just fucking crazy. A fucking demon telling them they have to choose, and it's just a fucking ring of people chanting and. Fucking burning shit and doing... I get it, and that's pretty cool, if you want to say that. You need to go and, you know, investigate other cultures and what works, and... But you're tying it directly to the fucking original movie. You're bringing in the mother. You have the kid 
writing a name. You've got demon speak and whatever the fuck they're doing to, um, you know, weave this into the movie. And like some of these other insidious movies or whatever the fuck and the ex, um, what's that the movies they do on that real life chick who was a bullshit artist? Anyway, Amity Bahara or whatever. And then, you know, someone will come in and give all the, all the information on the movie and they're like the guru. You see, that's what they started to do and then they just, you know, subvert expectation bullshit. Again, you got this fucking movie aping off the fucking movie the original and for what i just don't get it with your you know you take something i would want to make sure the script was fucking epic because sometimes you know you can get halfway you know cheap de decent actors and actresses and they pull off some great stuff because that's their trade that's what they love to do and it comes through you can't do that with the dialogue and the fucking weaving of the plot that was just bullshit. And we can go to Star Wars, the prequels, right? You know, we know Natalie Portman's fucking amazing. Hayden Christian, Ewan McGregor. It just wasn't directed right with the fucking, all the bullshit. And you got shit dialogue and scenarios and the plot set up in a weird way, which I kind of even enjoy, the politics. But getting into this, you, you, you move this movie forward from a family angst type thing which was probably smart right i mean you're gonna get the hard strings going this happened a certain amount of years ago this is why these people are like this then you had the girls who were you know thinking about um because one of the kids mother died he had to make that decision and that's the catalyst for moving into this new movie and the kids go out into the woods to try to do a fucking ceremony type thing and they're gone for three days now when this happens this is the only moment you have now when you bring them back is to just the movie has to just fucking be on point because you can hand wave the beginning of this movie away with okay it's setting everything up it's the beginning you know when i'm probably not using those actors and the sets and stuff are trying to be made to look like the 70s or whatever, 10 years ago, whatever it is, 13 years ago, as I think the Wikipedia said. And you're looking at the setup here. We're going to springboard. And again, you bring in people for prop stuff, and you didn't fucking give me a really solid story to care about. You just wanted to show off what, what special effects are, how much you can make the kids look like the original fucking movie. Is, is it... Is it that simple? Like it's it's almost like you you didn't make you didn't write the script yet, or you had a a rough outline, and then you call up people and you're like, oh, guess what? I can get Ellen Burson and Linda Blair will do a fucking cameo at the end, and then someone wrote a script, a bad one, because I can't see anybody handing me uh, uh, an outline and going, look. We've got Linda Blair. Okay, we got a short timeline. Right, how do we do this? Okay, we got we. Uh, and again, like the Die Hard movies, where like Die Hard Three was a separate movie, but they just fit it in for John McClane. Could this just have been a two kids get um, possessed, and the lead up to this is the beginning, and the setup is right? Maybe I would have forgived it more. Would it just been one of those things that just goes by me without registering much? Like oh. There's tons of these out there. Fucking, I, I don't. I don't even do reviews on a lot of them because they're just mainline, bland, well, you know, takes. And there's some ingenuity in some of them, you know, that'll be honest with. But they don't resonate. And they don't build up a mythos. They don't build up a fucking, you know, an excitement in me. And a, I'm thinking about thinking and all that stuff with these movies. That's what I want to do when I watch an Exorcist movie. I don't believe in ghosts and possessions and all that stuff. But I'm intrigued by it, people's belief, and what if it was real, and can it be believable? The first movie is a fucking story about a fucking mother and a daughter in a fucking apartment. I don't even think they own it, that they're renting, or they, they're watching it for somebody. And it just gets fucking crazy, and I, you could feel the tension, everything is grinding with you. And then you start revealing what's going on, and it just fucking, it just grabs you, the movie. This movie just fucking happens and it feels like 
one thing on top of another to get the kids in a circle chained to chairs. So you could spout things at them and they could fucking yell and scream and levitate and stuff. It just, again, maybe there's a, there's a, there's a main, there's a middle ground here that I'm not saying because I'm so in love with the first movie and the fact that he used the mother and Linda Blair in this fucking movie that I can't really come to terms with. I don't know. And I try to differentiate my fucking life shit that's going on, you know, what my frame of mind is going into these movies. Just don't like the taste of my mouth after this movie. And I've watched tons of horror movies that month. I didn't get to do one a day, and some are always things I've watched already. But this was one of the ones I wanted to watch. Hey, it's another movie in the mythos, and it does nothing for me. I wanted to like the mother... And her journey is a movie, but it just, it started feeling like it was just being used. And again, you even have a decent premise. You don't have to use my fucking, I'm doing air quotes, my impression of it. No, she's okay. She comes into the movie. This is what happened to me in my life. My daughter, I told a tell old book. And guess what? My daughter doesn't talk to me no more. I don't even know if she's alive. But maybe I can help you. Fine. Give them some information. But everything is it just falls flat on every point for me. The father, the wife, the other family, the kids' interaction afterwards. Like, what are you trying to do here? You got these little tidbits of the nerd, the nun who's, uh, I don't know, she had an abortion. And you've got all these elements coming in, but they don't feel weaved in right. They just feel like another step to get to the next step, to get to the next step. And again, you just wanted to get these kids chain to chairs in the fucking center of a room and just, you know, throw different culture stuff at them. And maybe that in itself is the middle ground that I don't see, but there's a underlying resonance with getting annoyed with some of these movies. Like how many times do I have to watch the Predator movie or the new RoboCop and not feel like these people wanted to Make a great movie, and it sucks because, again, my logic and my brain says no one's going out to make bad movies. The director wants to have a hit. The people want to make, you know, writing. The actors want to nail it and make a breakthrough if it's their first movie. Like, but these things are hard. I think it's difficult. Like, I have a friend, uh, Steve, who's into movie making, and all the pro- you look at the credits of movie. It's just mind-boggling sometimes that, that it can be made, so I try to give credit. I don't like shitting on movies for the fact of shitting on movies or all my fucking videos would be rants, which would get me more views and I don't know. But The Exorcist Believer, uh, I don't know, is it like the fifth, is it considered the fifth movie in the, in the fucking thing? I don't know. Let me take a look here. Because now I'm curious if there are two that are considered one. Uh... Oh, it's supposed to be a new trilogy? Alright, so now I'm at it, whatever. I'm actually watch, looking at the thing I didn't look at afterwards. Because usually after I do my reviews and stuff, I, I'll start looking at other people's reviews. I don't like to get tainted. But uh, in my little deep dive, I didn't see that there's actually a 225, a 2025 movie coming out. <laughs> Exorcist Deceiver? Uh, come on, you gotta be. I know sometimes I think this is a joke because Facebook is notorious now for having bullshit movie sequel posters and they're getting away with it because it's obviously Facebook uh, Photoshop nonsense that I could make do better. Exorcist, no, you jerk <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, no, it's not showing an actual page. Okay, I tried to look to see about The Deceiver, but it's not showing anything. But, oh, it's going to be out in 2025. Yeah, I can't say that year right. I don't know. Director, writer, maybe not the right fit. You took uh, something I really love. And sometimes you could take something I love and just have fun with it. I get it, you know. 
I was actually, when I first watched like the Starsky and Hutch movie, like, I was like kind of mad. Because Starsky and Hutch is like my favorite, one of my favorite TV shows. Cop drama, buddy, you know, two guys on the force. And they make a movie with, you know, these two comedy actors. And I laughed and had fun. And it just, it's a fun movie for me. But I do find things that I hold dear. That you fuck with, again, I think a part of me is saying, if Ellen Burstyn and Linda Blair weren't in this movie, it probably would just went by me as just another possession movie. It just would have just gone by and maybe, I'll give the benefit of the doubt, had a couple of moments in the movie. Because I can't even fucking think of enjoyable parts of this movie. Well, except for the part of my brain that wants to like that Linda Blair came back at the end and it wants to like that the mother's in this movie trying to help a family, help these families. But she's a great fucking actress. I, I mean, she might even be award-winning. Who the fuck knows, right? Is she like an... Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Academy Award. Okay, Tony Award. Emmy Award. She's, you know, she's great in that sense, but look, I don't know. You fucked with this something that is dear to me not only in my wheelhouse of loving horror uh, loving cinema i think it's a great movie on its own the impact it had on society what it did to the movie industry like it's it's amazing and it's so interesting on its own the book the peter blatty the directors and the, how they made the movie and it's it's you know it's blooming into a this legend and myth of what it was in the movie theater everything that impacted me i even hand waved the second movie and i won't sit here and tattle with it the prequel ones i kind of do two different versions whatever the amazing exorcist 3 with george c scott i fucking loved it you let me down i just felt like my air was taken out of me the excitement i had about watching a new exorcist movie it just felt like someone took a possession movie fucking wrote in a couple of fucking things and said, oh, you know this lady who comes in here and who gives some, you know, explanations for things or some advice? Yeah, let's make it Linda Blair's mom. And then I'll have, you know, I'll pay her a good sum. I'll pay her fucking whatever off. And she'll come in at the end and give the mama a hold of hand at the, at the bedside. And then we'll just make it the exorcist believer. You got to do better, in my, in, in my opinion. Call it a shitty time in my life. I'm a grumpy in every fucking movie I'll review I do. Maybe there's a trend. There'll all be kind of little semi-rants on things, which I don't think so because I know I enjoyed some of the stuff I watched, even some of the TV shows that I watched that I did that I got to, you know, touch back on. I don't think that's the case. I think this is the case of someone slapping on the exorcist, uh, you know, muscling in their fucking two characters that they had, the one character and fashioning it for Exorcist, putting the mother in at the end, boom, let's put Linda Blair and let's hope everybody loves this movie. And I don't think this movie did good with people, with critics. I can't see this movie captivating people. And you have that opportunity anytime you're doing these movies, whether it's a fucking Predator, a Robocop, a Halloween. You, okay, this director, the first Halloween 2008, his remake, I like the movie. I have no problems with it. Oh, the little nitpicks, obviously, because nothing's perfect, I guess. But those last two just, I, sh I fucking got angry. Shook my head, but I remember thinking, it's his vision. It's what he did what he did, just like Rob Zombie did with his fucking uh, train wreck that he fucking pulled off on his second one. Anyway, I guess I got to end this here because this is fucking going on too much. I think, again, my love of the original kind of taints this, I'll agree. But I don't think this is going to be critically acclaimed anywhere. It might give a hand wave as a part of the mythos is built on. Fine. But I can't see it as something I'm recommending or even given, uh, you know, I can't even think of good parts of the movie again. It just goes by and just becomes uh, another movie. But now it's kind of them aping off and ripping off like The Exorcist. And maybe that's what kind of bothers me with this, but that's what happens. Anyway... Hope everybody's doing well. Hope you had a great Halloween. Hope your Thanksgiving and Christmas is great because I do decent batches sometimes. And my love to all. I'll talk to you all next time. Take care.